Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this session, I want to discuss on number of work cycles to be timed during the direct time study procedure. The number of cycles that should be observed during the direct time study procedure depends on the variability in the work and the level of accuracy required. There is inherent variability in any human activity and the work element times might vary from cycle to cycle. So if you look at this example, so the variation between observation time taken appear for the element number one from the score observation. Okay. We can see the variation between the for observation time taken, 2.6, 2.34, 3.12, and 2.86. And these variations might result from the following variation in hand and body portions, variation in the placement of the parts and tools, variation in the quality of the static work units. The variation also might come from the operator mistakes variation in the worker pace and timing error by the analyst. Since time study is essentially a sampling technique in which the value of the time required for the job is based on the observed time for a sample of observation, it is possible using statistical techniques to estimate the number of observations required under specific condition. This is the number of work cycle to be time formula N. Yeah, you can see there are four parameters there. Okay. So we start with the standard deviations and average observed time. So again, we have is for data. So from this data, we are able to calculate the standard deviation value for this set of data for element one, and also we are able to get the average observed time. So that for S standard deviation and the X bar, the average observed time. The other parameter in this formula N is the T distribution value, which we get this value from T distribution table. Later on, I will show you how to get this value from the T distribution table. And the other parameter is K. So K defined as accuracy level or acceptable error desired in percent of the job element expressed as a decimal. Example, if I decide the acceptable error for this element is 10%, so it will be expressed as 0 0.1. If I decide the acceptable error for this element is 5%, it will be expressed as 0 0.05. So how to apply this uh, N number of work cycles to be timed formula. So we took this example one. Yeah. Seven cycles have been observed during a direct time study. The mean for the largest element time is 0 0.85 minutes, the X bar, and the corresponding sample standard deviation S is 0 0.15 minutes, which has also the largest. If the analyst wants to be 95% confidence, so this 95% is the confidence level, that the mean of the sample was within plus minus 10%. So this is acceptable error. Uh, expressed as percentage at 10%, plus minus 10% of the true mean. Analyze the number of observations should be taken. So to back to this uh, formula just now here, yeah, again, there are four parameters that we have to figure out. First, given is the standard deviation, 0 0.85, so there, and 
the second parameter is the uh, average observed time so this is 0 0.85 so now we look how the C distribution stable value applied to this formula so first uh, we have to look at this uh, DOF stands for degree of freedom value okay. so in this case because in the initial observation there are seven cycles or seven observation times so the degree of freedom value is 7 minus 1 okay. n minus 1 okay. so seven cycles already taken so again the degree of freedom value is n minus 1 so 7 minus 1 is 6 so we refer to 6 here okay so the next is the alpha value how we get this alpha value again okay stated here the confidence level is 95 percent so it means that 0 0.05 so alpha divided by 2 okay? alpha divided by 2 so the alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.025 that's why this alpha here we refer as 0 0.025 so don't forget to uh, divide it by 2 because in this formula the C is alpha divided by 2 again how we use these distribution tables yeah first we have to find out this uh, degree of freedom value yeah, degree of freedom value and the alpha value so the value in this table is 2.447 so we insert that and the last parameter is the k value. Okay, k value so again because the k value given here the acceptable error is 10 percent and we express in decimal uh, point so 10 percent is in decimal point is 0 0.1 so this is 0 0.1 and from this uh, value here uh, the n is 18.65 means for this example we should take 19 total observations so because we have already take seven initial observations so there are another 12 more observations should be taken in this example okay right so we look at another example Look at another example. A total of nine cycles have been observed during a time study. The mean, the x bar is 0 0.80 minutes, and the standard deviation is 0 0.15 minutes. Okay. If the analyst wants to be 95% confident level, the mean of the sample was within plus minus 10 minutes. So, if in the previous example, example 1, the K value given in percentage, but now the K given in time unit. Yeah. So, then we have two different scenarios. In the example 1, the K given in percentage, but in this example 2, yeah, in example 2, the K value given in time unit. So, back to this uh, formula. Yeah, again, we have to find out all these four parameters to determine the n value, the number of cycles to be timed in this example. So again, S is already given, okay, 0 0.15, X bar is, uh, okay, this is some tricky part here because the K now given in minutes. So for the T value, yeah, we can take from this table, same as previous example, with the degree of freedom now is 8, and the alpha divided by 2 stays 0 0.025, so refer to this T table, we should get 2.306, and then for this case, yeah, if just now we, uh, the percentage times by the time, observation time, but now we just take this error, error as their parameter. Yeah, so from here, the value is 11.96. So there are three more observations should be taken 